last little bit of theory I wanted to talk about, which is um, a very important point from a practical point of view, is what's called the inverse distance uh, rule. And that is um, the further you are away from the item under test or the item generating the sound, the lower the amplitude will be. So here I have my little handy dandy Mobius uh, ultrasound tool that's set one meter from my sound source, my ultrasound source. And you can see the amplitude and as a ratio, we're calling that 100%. As I move it out to two meters, you can see the dB value has changed by six dB. The value, you know, if we're looking at microvolts is now half. If we go out from two meters and we double it, so as we double it, we halve the amplitude. But if I go now another double to four meters, um, you can see that we're now quarter of what we were at one meter. So half and half of half is a quarter, so we're at a quarter. Um, but from a dB value, we've dropped a further 6 dB. So that's why the dB scale is quite useful. And we can look at relative amplitudes and see, okay, just how much has it changed? It can be confusing at first to think, okay, 6 dB is a doubling and uh, or a halving, depending on whether it's positive or negative. Um, but hopefully this sort of helps a little bit, you know, the closer we go, you know, if we go to half a metre, we've doubled. If I just get my mouse in the right spot, we've gone to 200%. If I just tweak it to the right spot and we've got um, yeah, 106 dB. I think I can just click on it and it'll jump there. Yep, 106 uh, dB. So it's gone up by 6 dB. Anyway, this is a very important rule because um, number one, if we are too far from the target, you know, we're looking at transmission lines and trying to measure them or something like that, we, we should not be too far away or the instrument may not be sensitive enough to detect it. We can, of course, use parabolic dishes and so on, which concentrate the available sound, amplifying it and thus making it easy for our, our device to measure. But it also means that we must be consistent in the way we take our measurements. You know, if we stand at different distances at different times where we are taking airborne measurements, um, uh, we will get different readings for the same uh, piece of equipment. We have to make everything as consistent as possible. You know, repeatability is very important with ultrasound as it is with all, all testing techniques. And to just explain the half rule again, think of a, you know, you drop a, a, a little pebble in a pond. You know, if we've doubled the distance from the center to the first ring and then double it to the second ring or from the first ring to the second ring, the area as we double it uh, has doubled. So therefore the amplitude is half. It's sort of, if you like, spread over twice the area. Okay, hopefully that helps a little bit. And that's why actually if you um, are quoting a, a dB value, you know, for any sort of reference, uh, you should say, well, that was the amplitude, 40 dB, um, but this was the distance. If you look at, you know, commercial products like chainsaws and things like that, you'll often see, like, and certainly from a standards point of view, they will say, if if you look at the uh, sound that's something like a chainsaw or a mower or whatever makes, the, the standard will say, well, it's a sound at a certain distance from the item. Okay, anyway. Um, so as I mentioned, it's always important to keep the, the same distance if we want to compare measurements. Sometimes what we're doing is, is looking for the presence of ultrasound. You know, if a system like detecting leaks um, you know, we don't expect to hear any ultrasound. If there's, if there's, you know, a little bit of a leak, then the amplitude will be lower. Um, and if we want to do a comparison, then we measure at the same distance. Otherwise, you know, we're just looking to get a sense for how bad the leak is in certain cases.